All right, folks, welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. My name is Drake. I am the Farming Aviator. Today we are plowing this field, getting it ready for uh, seeding in the spring, and then we're going to be seeding that field uh, that we cultivated and spread manure on. All right, let's get to it. back so as you can see I got the GPS lines on today I wanted to kind of show you guys usually I try to keep them hidden make it a little more realistic but uh, this is kind of a unique situation so I thought I'd show you guys what I'm doing here so we got the big uh, plow here uh, the biggest one that's you know not a modded one that uh, that's in the uh, farming simulator 19 game and uh, you see, it's not super wide, but uh, it's pretty long. What I'm going to do here is lift the plow up, start turning, and actually flip it over so you guys can see that. I'm going to skip a row and then join this one. It's a little bit easier if you do that, and then we'll work our way back. All right, there we go. It slipped over. We're going to drop it back down, and we'll come back afterwards and hit those end rows. Uh, we'll probably make, uh, take three passes to get all the uh, gaps left in the end rows. Alright, so as you see here, I got uh, four lines. Usually there's just three, but this tool is a little bit different. If you look here on the back, it's, a, it's offset. So the uh, tool actually goes further out to the uh, right there on your screen than uh, it does to the left which uh, if I would center it up there'd be a big gap for the width of the tool so looking here you got the two orange lines those are the width of the tool the green line is actually the center and then this red line is the offset but that's where the center of the tractor is so it's a little bit easier for me to have these on uh, to see where I'm lining up and everything I know it's not super realistic you probably have a GPS screen on uh, this monitor here in the tractor in real life uh, it's a video game, but I just wanted to show you guys what I'm uh, doing here to uh, to keep these GPS lines nice and straight. In our bottom right hand corner, have the speedometer down there, and then above that is all the GPS information. Starting at the top, my first row is actually 16 to the right. That's the very first row I started. I started on the uh, far side, far right side of that field. Below that is uh, the GPS signal, and it's actually turned on. That's why you get the green signal. And the steering wheel below that, as you can see, it just flipped off. That's because I went off my uh, GPS line and started turning. So I'm going to re-engage that. As you see, it turns green. And then I'm going to drop the tool back down. Go back to the outside view. You see it drops back down, and we're plowing again. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm also, as uh, we did on the last one, we rotated the uh, tool over. Not all the plows do that. This is one of the bigger plows, and so it has that feature to flip over to the other side. Let me turn off the lights here. We don't really need that anymore. Give you guys a little more view. This plow actually requires a lot of power. I think it's uh, 550 horsepower. So with this uh, tractor, we got 620 horsepower. Uh, it's plenty to pull it, although on some hills it kind of struggles a little bit. Uh, but uh, other than that, it does really well. So the field we're plowing is the sugar beet field. Um, we had to plow this one. And then the corn fields, we always have to plow those. So that uh, the big corn field that we harvested in the last video, I think that was two videos ago, um, we had to plow that one. Got that done yesterday, and uh, you see we just didn't clean off the tractor. We got done late, so I just uh, left it out in the yard, and we're starting first thing this morning. All right, I'm going to leave it on the outside view for you guys uh, as we get done with this row, and uh, so you'll see the tool flip and everything, and uh, you'll see me get back on my GPS line and uh, get going the opposite direction.
Alright, so they're flipping over. Sorry, going in that guy's crop. Sorry, neighbor. Alright, coming back on. Getting the GPS lined up. There we go. And we'll drop the tool back down. I'll drop the plow back down. And we'll get going. Alright, so you see I'm also skipping up there every other row. Um, that's just because it makes it easier with the turns. You don't have to take a sharp turn. The tool kind of gets jammed up, so it's easier just to skip every row, other row and then work our way back. I did our first row on the other end there to the right already. So we're going to work our way that way and then come all the way back across the field and finish up uh, with the end rows. So there's not much to plowing. Uh, it's kind of a soothing process though, just to sit in the tractor, go back and forth, get all those rows plowed, and uh, and uh, do that. So I'm gonna put you guys in a time lapse. Perfect time for a time lapse video. Not much else going on. Enjoy. So I thought I'd take a look at our shop. I'm going to show you guys what we're running here. We're going to our garage. So this is the uh, T9 that we have, the T9 700. As you can see down here, we got 620 horsepower on it. And then scroll. Uh, this is our planting row tracks. We're going to be planting this afternoon. Uh, so you guys will see that. That's 470 horsepower. It's a bit more than we need for the planter. But that's okay. We got some big hills and stuff like that. We go to the plow here. This is the plow we're running. So your car is 550 horse. It is the Gregoire Quenison. I believe that's what it is. It's kind of hard to read those letters. A little small. So that's what we're running right now. And then we got the, uh, we'll be running the road tracks uh, T9 with the. Great Plains planter this afternoon. All right, well, I'm going to finish up this field and uh, do the end rows and all that, and then we'll be planting this field just off to the right here uh, once we get back. 
All right, see you guys in a bit. Uh oh, oh man, that's not good. What happened? Everything's up. Oh, let me get out. Oh, Neil is not gonna be happy about this. What's going? Ah, oh, hydraulic leak. Ah, oh, the hose blew out. Oh man. That's not good. I just dug up his whole pat or part of his pasture here. Yeah, Neil's not gonna be happy about this. You guys are probably asking why I didn't pull it up and uh, put it in the stow mode in the field. Well, there's a car coming when I got done with the end row right here. So I just decided to pull forward and get out of the way. And then fold it up right over here. And then the hydraulic failed. Man. Well, let me shut this off. Alright, well, I'm got to go get a hose and get the truck over here. Get some hydraulic fluid. Ah, oh, Neil's not gonna be happy about this. All right. Well, I called Neil and told him. He said, "Don't worry about it. Grass can be planted. We got plenty of field." Let's see here. I'm just gonna get this truck backed up here. Turn that off. And we'll get this fixed, and then Neil said, "Yeah, just hop in the planter right away." Cause it's already one o'clock and we'll get that field planted and be done for the day so I'm gonna fix this quick and then hop in the planter as you can see we got our last bag of canola seed here we uh, filled up the planter I don't think this whole bag will fit but we'll get most of it in there we got the, uh, I brought, pulled the plow into the shop there. We couldn't, I got the, um, hose back on. But I couldn't quite get it, uh, fixed all the way. Alright, load that up. Alright, we're all set. Uh, I couldn't quite get the hose fixed all the way, um, but uh, Neil went into town. The shop had an extra hydraulic hose, so he's going to grab that and he's going to fix that. Uh, so I just pulled it, cleaned it off, pulled it into the shop for him. He wanted me to get in the planter and get planting uh, before the day's over, so we're going to do that. So I'll leave that right there. Run over to the uh, road tracks here and get going. All right, so we are planting canola here out in the field. We got the end rows all done. We're coming up on the end here, and we'll turn around at the GPS all set up. Let's take a look. We're in the T9 530 road tracks. Has about 470 horse, um, so it's not... Uh, underpowered by any means for this planter. I think this planter only requires 280 horsepower. But uh, it's nice for, especially that field over there by all the trees. Uh, it handles the hills really well, better than the T8. So we like using this one for planting. And that's about all we use this one for. Um, canola grows well uh, out in the winter here. Um, it'll be ready for harvest late summer. Uh, if we look at the economy here, it's one of those kind of medium yielding plants, uh, but then it sells for pretty good. You see just about uh, $1,250, right about this time of year. So we'll save it. Uh, once we harvest it, we'll uh, store the crop for uh, most of the fall and then sell it right uh, at late autumn, uh, early winter. So this field's not too big, it's not going to take too long. Uh, so we'll get some time-lapse video for you guys. And uh, we'll see you once uh, we're done with this field.
guess what? I just took a call from my grandpa, and he's deciding that he's going to retire. Now, it's going to be a slow retirement, but the big news is I'm going to be buying his farm from him. That's right. We're going back to Iowa. So, uh, he wants to enter a partnership where after five years, he fully retires. I'll fully own the uh, farm. And uh, I'll basically take over the day-to-day -day managing and all that uh, stuff uh, right away here in the spring. So I'm going to be moving back home to Iowa, back to more Iowa. We're moving to the county line map. Guys, we had fun out here in Oregon, uh, but it's time to go back home. Alright, if you guys enjoyed the Oregon series, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button leave a comment and uh, we got we will see you out in Iowa thanks again <laughs>